Banks are facing their toughest test in well over a decade with trillions of dollars in unrealized losses plaguing the economy, setting many of these banks on a collision course with their own balance sheets. We've seen this develop faster than anyone would have believed over recent weeks with a daisy chain of American banks falling apart and the chaos even spreading across the pond to Switzerland. It's now taken down Credit Suisse, one of the oldest and biggest banks in the world, and the media and these talking heads are all pushing the same narrative that the Fed came to the rescue, that there is nothing wrong with our financial system and this was all just a momentary blip, nothing to worry about at all. The truth though is a very different thing and we've just received a brand new report coming from economists from the Social Science Research Network that says there are 186 more American banks on the brink of failure, suffering from problems identical to the ones that brought these previous banks down and that number is not even close to the potential number of bank runs should things really go badly. If you want to get these kind of updates with real news that isn't dictated by some media billionaire, then sign up for my 100% free newsletter Stoic Markets, but more on that later. For anyone living in the wilderness lucky enough not to have to read the news daily like I have to, what's been going on over recent weeks? Well, bank failures. Banks have been falling apart all over the place, but they've mostly been concentrated in the US and actually in California. The biggest one to go was Silicon Valley Bank, and while it has now emerged that they were basically a criminal organization and that they refused to follow standard banking regulations, and they were more obsessed with the color of the skin of their board members than they were their financial stability, this is still a problem for the rest of the industry too. Because at the end of the day, their diversity hires surely didn't help the situation, but the reason SVB fell is they just outright lost billions of dollars as bond prices fell and every single American bank out there has also lost money on the bonds they own as well. Signature Bank which collapsed a few days after SVB lost billions as did First Republic Bank who have seen their slow but steady fall last over well a week now. Asset prices have fallen and banks own trillions of dollars worth of assets so banks have lost lots of money. That may seem like an oversimplification and to be fair it is but it's also all you really need to know about what has happened so far. The breaking news behind this video is that far more banks have lost far more capital than we had earlier realized and we only know this today thanks to an academic paper released just a few days ago that exposes just how bad this situation is. The paper is called Monetary Tightening and US Bank Fragility in 2023, Mark to Market Losses and Uninsured Depositor Runs. Now that's a riveting title I know but worry not you don't have to read it because I have. Now the gist of the paper is rather simple. We analyze US banks asset exposure with a recent rise in interest rates with implications for financial stability. The US banking system's market value of assets is $2 trillion lower than suggested by their book value of assets accounting for loan portfolios held to maturity. That is literally the first line from the abstract of this paper and they don't waste any time explaining that there are $2 trillion worth of losses that are not being accounted for because of sneaky accounting rules designed to help banks make billions of dollars. But this is where things get really bad because these economists have really done their homework. They've worked out that as SVB collapsed, they sold their assets and caused the average value of those assets around the entire world to fall by an average of 0.4%. 0.4% is not a huge number but keep that in mind for later. This paper then outlines how many American banks would collapse under a few different circumstances. The first circumstance is a little bit unlikely and it involves banks being forced to liquidate 100% of their assets in order to pay out every single depositor the most extreme bank run imaginable. Under these circumstances, 2,315 American banks would be insolvent and incapable of giving that money out that they owe. But as I said, 100% of all assets being liquidated and sold is incredibly unlikely, so we really shouldn't worry about this happening, especially since that first $250,000 in every account is guaranteed by the government, so a bank run occurring on assets underneath that mark really is very unlikely. But how would bank runs that are a little bit more realistic look? What would happen if all uninsured by FDIC deposits are withdrawn? Well, that would result in 1,619 American banks becoming insolvent, and this is a much more foreseeable future. Any penny over that $250,000 mark is legally uninsured, so if depositors get anxious and unsure about the safety of their bank, that money will be withdrawn. But maybe still, this is too negative an outlook for you. 100% of uninsured deposits being withdrawn is still too extreme a possibility in your mind, so what about if just 50% of uninsured deposits are withdrawn? This is actually a very likely result, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw this in the near future. 
Silicon Valley Bank saw about 25% of their deposits withdrawn over the course of one single day, so 50% being withdrawn for other banks over a longer time frame is not unrealistic at all. Well, under those circumstances, 186 American banks would find themselves insolvent and essentially collapse. 186 American banks. The turmoil over the last month was caused by five banks falling, and if just half of the uninsured capital is withdrawn, we will see 186 six banks collapse but i'm afraid it actually gets worse from here because as these assets are withdrawn they have to be sold they have to be turned into cash so they can be given to the depositors and that means massive sell orders on the open markets and the prices of these assets will fall. This is known as a fire sale and this happened just a couple weeks ago. Remember when I said that SVB's collapse alone caused asset prices to fall by 0.4%? Well, if the same thing happens for every other bank in America, if liquidating only half of their uninsured assets causes market prices to fall by just 0.4%, there will be an absolutely monstrous collapse in the American financial system. 1,724 banks will collapse under these circumstances. 1,724 banks will find themselves insolvent if their customers don't touch a single penny of the money that is insured and if they only choose to take out half of their capital that's uninsured. These numbers sound ridiculous, I know, I don't blame you for thinking that I must be lying about this paper, but I assure you, this is what the paper found. These are the circumstances laid out by these economists, and this is a very possible event that we may find ourselves in very shortly. The reality is that there is no mainstream media out there willing to delve deep into academic papers like this and explain exactly what they are predicting will happen. The Wall Street Journal did actually report on this paper, but the article is only five short paragraphs long and only mentions the absolute best possible scenario laid out by those economists where only 186 banks are insolvent. They refuse to even cover the 0.4% fire sale risk at all, not mentioning it even once throughout their entire article. The truth is, they have an agenda and that agenda is about keeping you in the dark, making sure you don't know what's really going on so that you're the last ones to pull your money out when the next bank run comes. And it isn't even like YouTube is much of a better platform for getting your news either. Just a couple of weeks ago, a British member of parliament, an elected government official in the United Kingdom, had a speech that he made in our Houses of Parliament taken down by YouTube. This speech was good enough for the most important governmental institution in one of the oldest countries in the world, but still YouTube won't let a single person hear that speech on their platform. If this platform YouTube is how you get your news about financial markets, if you rely on people like me to tell you what's really going on, what economists are really predicting for the future, then you need to subscribe to my free email newsletter, Stoic Markets. Twice a week, I send an email out for free that explains everything going on in the markets, especially the stuff that YouTube and the mainstream media won't allow on their platforms. It is the only way I can guarantee you see groundbreaking information like what I'm revealing in this video as YouTube have a habit of shadow banning and demonetizing the content I put out as well, which means half the time you never even get the chance to click on my videos. Just last week, I put out a video looking deep into a hedge fund whose explicit purpose is to identify the next black swan event and YouTube killed the video and forced me to take it down. You need to stay informed and you need to subscribe to Stoic Markets. It is 100% free and you can always unsubscribe if you don't like it, so go and click the link down below. As for the final notes from these economists on how bad the shape of our financial markets really are, here is a direct quote that they use to sum the entire situation up. Even if only half of uninsured depositors decide to withdraw, almost 190 banks are at a potential risk of impairment to insured depositors with potentially $300 billion of insured deposits at risk. If uninsured deposit withdrawals cause even small fire sales, substantially more banks are at risk. Overall, these calculations suggest that recent declines in bank asset values very significantly increase the fragility of the US banking system to uninsured depositor run ones and these banks are essentially saying the same thing as two. A group of American banks known as the MBCA or Mid-Size Bank Coalition of America together sent a letter to the FDIC asking them to insure 100% of their deposits for the next two years. That's 110 American banks, including some with assets as large as $100 billion, unsure of their financial stability and being forced to ask the FDIC to insure all of their deposits because they know if things go even slightly wrong, they will suffer catastrophic bank runs. 
Now, what exactly did they have to say? Notwithstanding the overall health and safety of the banking industry, confidence has been eroded in all but the largest banks. Confidence in our banking system as a whole must be immediately restored. It is imperative we restore confidence among depositors before another bank fails, avoiding panic and a further crisis. These are not the words of banks that are solvent. These are the words of banks that know they are in trouble and they know the only way out is a bailout from the FDIC like we saw with Silicon Valley Bank. One US congressman who used to be a banker and a member of the House Financial Services Committee said, and I quote, if you don't do this, there's going to be a run on your smaller banks. Everyone's going to take their money out and run to the JP Morgans and these two big to fail banks. And they're going to get bigger and everyone else is going to get smaller and weaker and it's going to be really bad for our system. The reality is that there is no easy solution here. Banks are not required to hold the money you deposit as physical cash. They are legally allowed to go out there to invest it to try and make a profit on your money and there's nothing you can do about that. And on top of that, every single bank in the world does it. So when we find ourselves in a monstrously poor period for asset prices where bond prices fall, property prices fall and equity prices fall, these banks lose money and suddenly find themselves under collateralized. They have lost billions of dollars on bonds over the last two years. That is a fact. That is real money that is gone and it's not coming back. If everyone goes to take their money out at once, the money will simply run out. Some will say this is fear mongering, but that is just the truth of the situation today. And just to make matters even worse, these banks are incredibly wealthy and powerful. So in the past, they manipulated the system and lobbied politicians to put corrupt broken rules into place that allow them to exploit the system for money. They invest your cash into government bonds. They receive interest payments in the short term, book billions of dollars in profits and pay out those profits to shareholders and give themselves hefty bonuses for good measure. And all the while, the assets that are supposedly made making them those profits are actually losing them billions behind the scenes. Blackstone, one of the largest financial institutions in the world, just defaulted on one of their debts, yet they paid out $1.3 billion to their founder and CEO. They couldn't even afford to pay off half a billion dollars of debt, but they just gave out $1.3 billion to their CEO for doing such a good job. This is a broken system and it has been rigged against you for years. I won't be surprised at all if this video finds itself under attack from YouTube once more as videos of mine being shadow banned and age restricted is practically commonplace at this point. The only way I can make sure you see the truth and hear about these collapses and bank runs before it's too late is if you subscribe to my free newsletter Stoic Markets. It's just two emails a week explaining everything going on. The emails are 100% free from the restrictions placed upon YouTube videos and you can always unsubscribe instantly if you want to so click the link down below in the description and I look forward to speaking with you at Stoic Markets. If you just want to hear about Blackstone and their silent collapse then watch this video here.